So, welcome to Honey Badger 3D Print and Paint. Before we get started, this is the way. Roll those credits. Okay, so welcome back. So um, as you can see, we did the Mandalorian helmet and the Mandalorian rifle. So this, I believe, is the Mandalorian helmet from Nico Studios. Um, really popular thing to do at the moment, um, obviously with the new Mandalorian um, TV series that came out, what, a year and a half ago. Baby Yodas and Mandalorian helmets have been all the rage. This is a uh, this is one of the Mandalorian rifles. This particular one is from Colts 3D. Um, it's mainly 3D printed, but there are two uh, two dowels. So there's a dowel here that runs all the way from there all the way through this into the buttstock, and there's this other dowel here which does the same again. So it runs all the way through this, all the way down, and all the way into here. Um, I decided to go for a relatively simplistic paint job on this, which for the most part was just rub and buff to, um, to try and bring some of that, um, that, that sort of metal to life. Um, and the same with this. So this one was um, sanded down, then a couple of coats of sandable primer, then I wet sanded it. Um, then I went through and I did um, a base coat of chrome then I went over that in a gunmetal uh, gun steel, I think it is, or a gunmetal silver. And then all the low lights are done in black. And then there's a gloss uh, primer, sorry, there's a gloss coat that goes over the top. Um, both my primers and my gloss were from Autotech. So um, I find that the Autotech primers and the, uh, and, and the gloss sprays, uh, they're quite easily sandable because they're actually meant for cars. Uh, and they're meant for car bodywork, and um, they're, they're just a bit cheap, to be honest. They're just cheaper than, than going out and buying Rustle M's or buying Citadel primers and all that sort of stuff. The size of the things that me and Mike have to prime, um, and in some cases, because they're multiple materials, so like this has got wood in it, as well as being the, uh, as well as being the plastic, I just find that the Autotech stuff just covers everything, and it's you know easy to sand back and everything else. Um, the helmet to size it. So, um, Nico, Nico Industries actually has um, a, a couple of tools that can help you size your helmet, um, that let you figure it out. Um, I actually did this 100% scale, and it just happens to fit. So, um, so on the inside, you can see that we've got this bit of uh, this this film that goes on there. That's just cut into a T-shape and then glued in. And then just for a bit of comfort, I've taken some um, packaging from actually one of my 3D printer boxes and I've just put that in there to, um, to mean that when I put this on my head, I'm not just slamming a, a, a bin of plastic onto, um, onto, my, uh, onto my head. So, um, so yeah, so that one was nice and easy. Uh, again, with this one, so this was pretty much just a, just a um, rub and buff silver and rub and buff gold, and then, uh, and then I painted this with, a, with an airbrush 
Brown from Vallejo. Um, they're quite effective, so um, so that you can get some sort of, I don't know if we can do this on the camera, but let's see if we can line it up. You can get some cool shots, and it's a decent, it's a decent rifle for cosplay or something like that. It's relatively sturdy. Um, I could have probably put a bit more glue in a few more places to stop the wobble that there is in a, in a couple of bits. Um, but overall, I, I'm really happy with the result. And it's definitely something that if you were going to a convention or something like that, it's definitely a good enough accent to be able to, to cosplay with. You'd more than likely have this slung across your back anyway, rather than actually carrying it around. Um, it's worth noting that you should definitely check out um, if you're going to a Comic Con or you're doing any cosplay, check out their rules around imitation firearms. This is quite obviously not a firearm, but at the same time, some, uh, some cosplay places have a number of rules around what you can and can't bring in, how they have to look, some of them have to have orange tips or whatever. So, um, so if you are gonna print this for cosplay, then definitely check out the rules of, of wherever you're going to go and cosplay and just see what their rules are about um, about weapons like that. But yeah, the, uh, the helmet was a relatively easy print. So whenever people are printing these helmets, generally speaking what they'll do is they'll, um, they'll make it so that there's really only sort of one column about that thick of, um, of supports that goes in the middle and then there'll be supports that support the visor parts as well. Um, that cuts down massively on print times, so um, most people will do manual support placement for that. The problem you have if you try to do um, automatic supports is your slicer will more than likely try to fill this entire area and it's just a waste of material because it's just not needed. The, 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 outer, the, the outer layers come out really nicely anyway, um, you just don't need to do it. There's a lot of people who try printing them upside down um, and if you're going to be basically coating your whole thing in Bondo and then sanding that back to get that mirror smooth finish, it's fine to do that because this is going to be your support interface layer. So you're going to have support sort of all around here and when you take that off, it's going to be a scarred surface. Um, it really depends on, on, on what you plan on doing with it afterwards. I've said before on the channel that I really don't mind if my things look 3D printed. I'm not trying to get screen accurate results. I'm not trying to do like exhibition grade props and replacement parts and things like that. So I don't mind if you can see the layer lines. I would prefer that my part was 3D printed because generally speaking, people then go, oh, is that 3D printed? And I get to talk about 3D printing with them for 20 minutes and they can't escape. So, um, so yeah, so I don't, I don't tend to sort of coat something completely in Bondo, so sand it all back till it's super smooth and then get like a mirror finish on it, which a lot of people do when they're trying to do their Beskar armor and things like that. So yeah, so let me know what you guys think. Uh, if you know of any other um, rifles, uh, any other any other um, sort of Mandalorian rifles and things on any other in, on any of the other marketplaces, then definitely let us know in the comments because I really love printing these, and this one particularly is really cool. Uh, I'll put the link to this in the video description, and I'll put the Nico Sterling one in as well. Uh, the Nico Industries one, sorry. Um, and uh, yeah, thanks for thanks for watching. Don't forget to like and subscribe. And don't forget to hit that notification bell so you get notified whenever any of our new videos come out. Alright, thanks for joining us guys.